Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install Tabletop Simulator and the basics on how to play X-Wing 2.0 on Tabletop Simulator. This tutorial series does assume that you already know the rules of X-Wing, so I will be using game terminology throughout the series. Let's jump in. The first thing you'll need to do is download the Steam client and create an account. Now, your account name that you create on Steam will be the name that's seeing on Tabletop Simulator when we do get to play with other people. Once you're on the Steam store and you have Steam installed on your computer, you're going to go ahead and navigate over to Tabletop Simulator. Now, its normal price is $20, but you might get lucky, and sometimes you will catch it for up to 50% off, so go ahead, add it to your cart, and make the purchase. Once you've purchased Tabletop Simulator, next we need to add the X-Wing module to our TTS. Let's head over to the Community Hub, and now we are going to click on Workshop. Then we are going to go to this search bar right here and type in X-Wing Unified 2.0. We're going to search and we will see our result right here. Open it up and you will see a green subscribe button. Currently, I am subscribed. When you start, it's going to say unsubscribe. Now, once you subscribe to it, this is going to add X-Wing to your TTS and it allows your module to stay up to date and receive updates when the developers push out new ships, new features, or fixes that need to be made. Now open up Tabletop Simulator on your computer. Click the Create button and select Single Player. We'll talk about how to find and set up multiplayer games in another video. Now next to the Workshop option here, you will see the X-Wing Unified 2.0 mod. Click on it to load the game. Select load. Once we're in the game, we need to learn how to navigate around the table. Use your WASD keys to control your location. Use your mouse wheel to control zooming and use the arrow keys to adjust your view angle. Now let's get ready to play. You need to choose your player color. Do that by selecting your name here on the top right. Click change color. And usually games are played on the red versus blue side of the table. So I'm going to be choosing red today. Now let's get your list. I recommend using either yet another squad builder or launch bay next to build your squads and then import them using the TTS text function. Once you have it built in your squad builder, export, go to TTS text, copy that. And now let's head back to the table. Navigate over here on the left to our squad spawner. Simply click on TTS spawner, choose your faction and paste the TTS text into the box and click spawn ships. All of the cards, tokens, ships, and dials you need should appear right there next to the spawner. You could also use the in-game squad builder to build your list, but I personally prefer the yet another squad builder method uh, as I personally make squads much faster in those squad builders. To move your list to the play area, click and drag to highlight all your pieces. While Clicking and holding down the left click button, use your mouse wheel to rotate your squad to the orientation needed. If you prefer, you could also use the Q and E keys on your keyboard to rotate it as well. Navigate over to your player area and set the ships down in the desired location. A quick word of warning that does mess up some new players when they get started. Be careful not to shake the squad with your mouse uh, when you first grab it. Because if you do that, your squad is going to end up being a crumpled mess. Now let's head into game setup. We'll start with dials. Assign your dials to your ships by dropping them on your ship bases. You can save some time doing this by highlighting all of your dials at once clicking, picking them up, and dropping them on their bases all at the same time. But of course, if you prefer, you could always do those one at a time as well. I personally prefer to keep my dials closer to the table, so at this point, what I usually do is I pick them up 
and drag them a little bit closer to the mat. And then I'll go a step further. I also prefer them a little bit larger. I'll hover my mouse over the highlighted dials and use the plus sign on my keyboard to make the dials a little bit bigger. Now let's place obstacles. Behind the clock, you will find the toggle rulers button. Click that one time to get the standard play area for obstacle placement. Obstacles can also be found behind the clock. They're divided by when they were released and by obstacle type. Click and drag onto the board the obstacle type that you would like. And then if you need to search for a particular obstacle in each set, use your number row keys while hovering over the obstacle to find the one that you need. To set up your obstacles, drag them to their desired location using the mouse wheel to rotate it if you'd like. Go ahead and release the obstacle in the spot that you'd like it, and once you're happy where it is, go ahead and while hovering over it, click the L key on your keyboard to lock it in place. If you need to unlock the obstacle for some reason, simply hover over and again hit L to unlock the obstacle. Once all the obstacles are set, hit the toggle rulers button again to get the range one deployment area for your ships. Now, let's go ahead and start setting up ships. To do that, click and drag your ship into the place that you'd like it. You can use the buttons on the dial, now that we're using Sunterfell right now, to adjust the angle of the ship if you'd like by any of the degrees that are on that dial. You can also use the little arrows here to slightly nudge the ship in any of these directions if you're really trying to lock in a very specific location. Once you're happy with its spot, go ahead and click place ship to lock in its location. Once all the ships are set, hit the toggle rulers button one more time to get rid of the range one deployment area on both sides. Now let's go ahead and choose and execute maneuvers. To choose your maneuver, click the moves button on the center of the dial and select the maneuver that you want to execute. Once you've clicked on one, you will see that it'll be highlighted orange. Once you have the one that you're happy with, go ahead and click set. When it's that ship's turn to move, Go ahead and hover your mouse over the dial and click the F key on your keyboard to flip and reveal the maneuver. Then click move. If you need to undo your maneuver for some reason, then go ahead and click the undo button on the dial. If you need to check the path of the template, then click the maneuver name in the center of the dial to make the template appear and disappear. Now it's time to do actions. All actions for the ship can be performed from the dial. Hover over T on the right side to show whatever tokens you might need. Simply click the one that you need to have the token assigned to it. Click on R or hover over R to get the reposition menu. You have your barrel roll and boost options right there. If need be, you could use the undo button here to undo your repositions. An example of needing to do this would be if you're checking multiple different barrel roll options. And then over here on the left side, A is for arcs. Here you can spawn a range three bubble for a target lock check, as well as any other range bubbles or arcs that you may need for different type of card effects. When it's time for a ship to engage, you can check your arc again by using that arc menu. Simply click on the arc that you need. Once you have your shot lined up and you know if a certain ship is in range, you can head over to the red dice over here. Left click and drag out a die. While still holding on to that die and holding that left click, you can use your right click to take additional dice that you might need. Of course, you could also take them out one by one, but trying to save you some time. So once you have your dice pool selected, place them on the table, highlight them, and then click R on your keyboard to roll them. You of course see the dice results show up here on the table and you will get a confirmation of those results in the game chat box. Also note that there are no cocked dice in TTS. Every roll will give you a result even if the dice doesn't look flat on the table. Now, if for some reason you need to modify a dice due to having a force or some type of effect here, you can do that very easily. Hover over the dice 
and use the number rows to alter the dice. Use one to change a dice to a blank, two to change it to a focus, three to change it to a hit, and eight to change it to a crit. The same is true for defense dice, except of course three is gonna give you an evade instead of a hit. After you're done attacking, you can get rid of the arc by clicking the delete square above your base. Next, let's go ahead and deal some damage. The damage decks are usually automatically shuffled when you start the game, but I always make a habit of shuffling the cards before I start just in case they didn't get shuffled. Do this by hovering your mouse over the damage deck and hitting R on your keyboard. To deal damage cards, click on the damage deck and quickly drag out a card and you will see it in your hand. Now, just a quick note, if you accidentally hold the click too long, you will actually grab the entire damage deck. Don't panic though, just put it back and click and grab a card quickly and place it where you might need it, whatever pilot is gonna be taking that damage cards. As for shields and any other charges that might need to be flipped during a game, simply hover over them and click the F key to flip them over. It is that simple. And of course, if you need to flip them back for any reason, hover over them again and hit that F key. To reset the table and start from a blank slate, head up to the games menu here at the top of Tabletop Simulator, open it up, and again, under workshop, once again, hit the X-Wing Unified mod, load it up, and this will give you a clean table to start from. And now that you know how to use the basics of the mod, you can head to part two of this series where I show you how to drop bombs, deploy remotes, and use tokens with any type of movement effects such as ions or decloaking, as well as some other small things that will improve your experience. And whenever you're ready, head over to part three in the series where I show you how to set up and join multiplayer games as well as how to find players to play games here on Tabletop Simulator. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Gold Squadron out.